Good to be with you again, Alliance Northwest family. Hey, this month in my uh, DS uh, update, I have two events that are coming up soon. I just wanted to remind you of and talk about briefly. And then for the moment that we find ourselves in right now, just have a word of encouragement and then three angles. I'm going to ask you to begin making sure are embedded in your ministry and in your personal life because I think they're the most needed practices right now for the health of all of our leaders. All right, but first, two events that are coming up that I want to remind you of and make sure you get on your calendar. The first is, you've probably noticed that this year we have a uh, sexual uh, misconduct training for all of our licensed workers. It's about 90 minutes. It's a, it's a Christian-based teaching on helping us all understand uh, sexual harassment in church, on staff, sexual misconduct. Uh, we'll give you some good terms, understandings, as well as if someone accuses you of that or there's an accusation of that with someone on your staff or even in your church. It's going to give you some tools on what do you do, how do you respond, who do you talk to. So this is a this is something that I, I think will help you in the long run. It's one way for me to also look out for you, to make sure as a district all of our licensed workers are getting on a regular rhythm some uh, some training and some equipping in these areas that protects you. It protects your church, and it also protects the district as well. So please jump on there. It's like I say, it'll probably take you 90 minutes-ish to get through it, and you can do it in sessions too. When you log out, you can log back in. It'll be waiting for you. The second thing that I'm really excited about is we are doing our first ever Deeper Life Conference here in the Alliance Northwest. Uh, Dr. Uh, Ron Walborn is our keynote speaker, and Greta Bryson will be our worship leader. We have some great and powerful breakouts as well. So this is October uh, 25, 26, and 27. Props and shout out to North Seattle Church for hosting this event. But man, this is going to be a great journey into experiencing the deeper life of Christ while getting some tools on how to implement the deeper life practices, not only for you, but in your church. This is a crucial time, and we are in desperate need of a fresh move of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So really would love to see you there, all right? Now on to uh, this, uh, this month's encouragement, Working the Angles. So there's a book that I want to recommend to you, so I'm going to start there. The book is Eugene Peterson's working the angles. This book was a game changer in my ministry. The reason I'm bringing this book up, and I want to just discuss the angles with you and encourage you in them a bit, is over the last two weeks, the Alliance Northwest staff, we've had a, just a couple really robust conversation around the moment we're in, the health and bandwidth of our leaders. What do we do to come alongside you? How do we help support and how do we breathe life into you? It's one of the reasons that the Deeper Life Conference is coming up. One of the reasons that we want to offer the sexual misconduct training because of all the allegations that happen in this day and age. So as we continue to look for ways to really support you and serve you, we were just discussing about this moment, and two of our conversations were both around a, a Carrie, some Carrie Newhoff um, interviews. Uh, so two about two weeks ago, uh, Carrie had he had a uh, an article and a video on five faulty assumptions about the future church. That's a great great article. I'll see if I can't um, attach it to this video for you. So look look in the email for a download link. But uh, he talked about five faulty assumptions that we're making in this moment. And as we discuss that, number five is what hit us the hardest. His fifth faulty assumption is that running really hard is the only way to fix the church decline, the people not coming back, the tensions that we felt. So we had a long conversation. Now, come back to that in a moment. But this Tuesday, we were discussing... Uh, an interview that Carrie held with Rich Veladas from New Life Church. And Rich, well, the whole 
the whole video and transcript is is gold. I really encourage you to go go and watch that. Rich, I want to read you. Rich said this. He said, uh, I think like every other pastor and leader, the last couple of years I've been weary, honestly weary. I think the way I've tried to explain it is we're living in a CPR world, a world in which there's this convergence of COVID, C, political idolatry, the P, at least in the U.S., and racial hostility, that's the R. And so the convergence of these three things have made it hard to breathe. Our hearts are ailing. And I think that in addition to the regular pressures of just life and leadership have been very challenging. Within the congregation that I pastor, we've seen some significant shifts in terms of who calls new life home these days. I have needed rhythms of friendship, seasons of rest, and just ongoing inner work to navigate the terrain of the last few years. God's been gracious, and I'm experiencing lots of joy and peace, but it certainly has not been interesting. That CPR, where we look at the fallout of COVID, the fallout of political idolatry in the U.S., and, and really the fallout of racial hostilities, this has created an environment where uh, that people aren't coming back to church. We have seen decline. We've seen conflict in the church. Our leaders, and you might be one of them, have just been weary and tired and burnt out. And like the other <laughs> article I mentioned, the five faulty assumptions, so we have been running really hard thinking the only way we can fix this is if I just work harder. I have heard that from you. I've heard you say, Monty, I am working harder than I've ever worked in ministry for less results. It seems like we're down, and anytime we reach new people, we lose people, and it's been a hard season. So what I want to encourage you with, and look at the three angles from Eugene's book, <laughs> is this. Running harder is not going to fix this season. God is up to something in this season, though. He's refining his church. I believe he's calling us to the deeper life. I believe the Holy Spirit is empowering his church to truly be a witness of the life of Jesus in our communities. I think that we're being purged of, of, of idolatry in the forms of commodity-driven culture, a materialistic culture, um, a political culture. I believe we're being called back to a kingdom <laughs> culture. And just running harder isn't the fix. Although you might have been trying it, it's probably just been taking you farther away from intimacy with Jesus. The three angles that Eugene talks about in his book are crucial for understanding what is needed in this moment. If it's not working harder, what is it? Well, you want to read from the book. Peterson, Peterson writes, the visible lines of pastoral work, the visible lines of pastoral work are preaching, teaching, and administration. The small angles of this ministry, so where those visible lines intersect in a triangular form, so where all those lines intersect, what holds preaching, teaching, and administration together are prayer, scripture, and spiritual direction. Hmm. The length and proportion of the ministry lines are variable, fitting a wide range of pastoral gifts. If though the lines are disconnected from the angles and drawn willfully or at random, they no longer make a triangle. Pastoral work disconnected from the angle actions is no longer given its shape by God. Wow. So Eugene is saying if preaching teaching and administrations are not intersected with prayer, scripture, and spiritual direction, then those primary angles are disconnected. You are doing church in your own gifting, your own strength, and in your own power. It's disconnected by the life of God. That's convicting. When I read this book, I was convicted. Probably the first two, you don't need a ton of encouragement. You would agree. What your church needs right now from you is you forming and centered and tethered deeply to Jesus. Not a regurgitator of biblical information, but someone who finds their life flowing from the center of Trinity into their lives. That's what 
the church needs and allow the Lord to grow or diminish the church as he sees fit. Your job is to be faithfully forming and then faithfully helping your people to form. Prayer. How much time are you simply pulling aside in silence and solitude to pray not only for a church, friends, family, and the list, but to listen? Listening prayer. The kind of prayer that forms you. Rich said for himself, he had these three rhythms that have sustained him. One was the rhythm of friendship. So crucial. If you're just running harder and thinking working harder is going to fix this season, uh, you probably don't have very deep friendships. Rich said those friendships have been a part of the sustaining. Also, seasons of rest. If your RPMs are running at 8,000 all the time, trying to keep your church growing, and you're not experiencing seasons of rest, pretty soon your engine's going to blow. You know that and I know that. Rich said seasons of rest for him. And the last one that Rich said, that his third his third angle that he was encouraging was really focusing on the doing inner work. How is it with your soul? How are you doing? This takes Eugene's angle of prayer. It really does. Are you drawing a pipe apart in some seasons to just listen to the Lord? If you haven't been, I encourage you to do that. Move beyond just prayers before meals and prayers before meetings and short prayers at church. Linger in the presence of God because it's there that he forms you and shapes you. My prayer always leads into my time with scripture, which was Eugene's second thing. Not just reading and studying scripture so that we can preach a good sermon or get information out. I did that for years, friends. I really did. I read so much. I studied so much so that I, so that I could preach well or teach well. It wasn't forming me. It might have helped others form because it was true, but it wasn't forming me because I was just getting through the information rather than in prayerfulness, allowing scripture to form me, to dance with the text, to let the text speak to me, to let the text convict me and convince me, to allow the spirit to illuminate the text. That takes time. I'm not just... I'm not just doing my keyword studies. I'm not just trying to get a good handle for a sermon. I'm not just trying to get a point that matters. I'm allowing this very living word from God to transform me. Those two areas, I'm going to encourage you. Major on those. And the third one, this is what convicted me when I read Eugene's book about giving spiritual, uh, giving spiritual direction. Ironically, this is the work that many people assume pastors do all the time. Teaching people to pray, helping parishioners discern the presence of grace in events and feelings, affirming the presence of God at the very heart of life, sharing a, a, um, excuse me, sharing a searchlight for light through a dark passage in the pilgrimage, guiding the formation of a self-understanding that is biblically spiritual instead of merely psychological or sociological. In other words, most parishioners assume, pastor, that our primary job is to meet with them, to help guide them in the discerning process of hearing the voice of God, surrendering to the Holy Spirit, and becoming far more Jesus-formed and shaped than culturally shaped. I think these last three years of COVID, political idolatry, and, and racial tensions have shown us that we have not been formed deeply in kingdom realities, but we have been formed in cultural truths. Spiritual direction. I want to say it was about the third year of the S, uh, when I planted Snoqualmie, when I read this and was convicted because I was like, I don't have time for counseling. The church was growing. I felt we were understaffed, under-resourced. You know it. I don't, I, I was... Who are the good counselors I can send people to? I read that it changed everything about the way I did ministry. I shifted. I shifted away from saying, yeah, I do counseling. And I moved and that began my journey into becoming far more of a spiritual director in my church. Not only for my staff team, but for the folks in, in my church. That also helped me know what was God up to in the lives of the congregation. It made me a better pastor. Spiritual direction for you and for your people is crucial. 
Now, as you know, you know, recently in our district, we've uh, hired uh, Dwayne Smithgall for leader care, as I am really trying to emphasize in the years ahead, a reintegration into offering spiritual direction for our leaders. We're working on some, some new trainings and some new equippings for you and for those who are already spiritual directors. Dwayne's working on a list of here's our approved spiritual directors because you need spiritual direction in your life. But from that will flow your ability to be a spiritual director for your people in the congregations that you lead. All right, so in this moment, if you've been feeling tired, if you haven't seen people coming back to church at the rate you wanted, if you haven't seen conversions where you were, remember, trying harder isn't the answer. You forming more deeply is. I'm going to encourage you to build rhythms of prayer, immersion in the scriptures, to spiritual direction to the Jesus will meet you powerfully in those three areas. Well, I love you all. And uh, I am praying for you. And I'm in it with you. So as you head into this next month, may you find the grace of presence. May you find a rhythm of shalom and peace. May you sense the Spirit speaking to you in fresh new ways. And may you find your soul finding a wholeness and a settledness and the elimination of hurry, worry, and a frantic pace of trying harder to build something that simply won't last. Let it be about Jesus and let him form your soul. I love you. We'll see you soon.